Hello everyone, Steve here with another update to my large easy build clock. This follows the same guidelines that were used on the smaller easy build clock, but in the, the larger format. This is SP4 and the, the refresh is called SP4B. So if you've already purchased the design in the past, you can go to my mini factory and download the, the updated version of this clock. Lots of changes were done to this clock. And in fact, it's a pretty much a complete refresh of the entire design. The most important change is a, a new, more efficient gear tooth profile that prevents what I used to call sticky gears. There was several other changes made to the design as described in the video on the small easy build clock. Uh, specifically, the, the frame components have alignment tabs instead of just screws holding them together. It's a much more, it's a much more precise way to align the, the frame components. Also, an updated winding key that's just much more secure and there's nothing that can break off on this design compared to the original design. So it's just an overall better winding key mechanism. And then there's additional bearings added to the ratchet and behind the minute hand arbor. So instead of five bearings, this new design uses eight, although you can still build it with the five bearings that were included in the original design. I just think that that's a minor wear point on the ratchet and the back of the minute hand arbor. Everything that supports a weight, like the winding drum, always had a bearing and it still needs a bearing. There's a bearing in the, the pulley in the weight shell and also in the, the pendulum arm. If you've already purchased this design, you can go to my mini factory and just download the, the files again. The latest version of the, the clock will be there. there. There's no extra charge, but I figure if I have an opportunity to make the clock better, everyone who's purchased the design in the past should have access to that. This clock has runtime options of 8, 11, 17, or 23 days, which is a little bit longer than the original design that had a maximum runtime of 21 days. This clock is running in 23 day mode with a seven and a half pound drive weight. And that's pretty much the bare minimum. You can see the pendulum amplitude is fairly shallow. The clock really runs a lot more robustly with an 11 pound weight. So in, on my clock, anywhere between 10 and 11 pounds would be ideal. Notice how much more energetic the escapement is and a slightly stronger amplitude on the pendulum. What I like to do when I build clocks is figure out the, the smallest weight that allows the clock to run reliably and add a 30 to 50% margin on that. So from a, a seven and a half pound weight, adding a little bit of margin brings it up into the, the 10 or 11 pound range. Then the clock is very reliable. If this is the first time that you're building one of my clocks, I don't recommend that you start off it in the most aggressive 23 day mode. The 11 or 17 day modes will be much easier to get the clock tuned and running properly, and it'll be a lot less frustrating. And heck, even in eight day mode, there's nothing wrong with that. Winding once a week is very easy to live with. The 23 day mode is much more aggressive option. I only recommend that if you're really up for a challenge. It might take a little bit more debug to get this clock tuned and running. The debug guide has several pages of hints on what you can do to make sure that this clock is running properly. And if you follow through with all of these steps, you should have a very reliable clock that pretty much runs right out of the gate. But occasionally, occasionally some people do have problems getting their clock running. So let me go over a couple of the most common things that can occur. This is a part straight off the printer and the holes are not necessarily very predictable. Oftentimes the holes close up, even though they're slightly oversized in the design. But as you can see, this arbor is a little bit tight on the shaft. And if I can spin the arbor and the gear spins with it, that is way too much friction. 
this gear needs to spin freely on this arbor. What I like to do is take a little pin vise and drill each of the gears from both ends. This clock is going to use one and a half millimeter arbors and I'm using a 1 16th inch drill bit which is about 1.6 millimeters so just a little bit of clearance and blow out any of the swarf and then when you put that gear on the arbor it it should spin freely and you notice the difference I mean, if i spin if i spin the arbor the gear is not moving with it or if i spin the gear it's going to spin for several seconds probably 10 or 20 seconds before it slows down you you definitely notice when the gear reaches a point of minimal friction on the arbor that's what you want on every gear in this clock and also everywhere that there's an arbor hole in the frame make sure to drill those out and make sure that the arbor will go into those holes with a little bit of clearance as well the next most common issue that builders will find is lack of end shake i can possibly describe it on this clock uh, end shake is vertical uh, when the clock is sitting on the, on the bench it's a vertical clearance of all of the gears the two most likely locations that you'll have problems with end shake are the central arbor where there are five components stacked that all have to fit within the space of the frame and if each one of those parts prints a little bit taller than expected that adds up to not enough end shake and it's hard maybe maybe hard to see but on this clock there's about a millimeter of end shake and that's great the next high risk area for end shake on this clock is the escapement arbor that one also has five components stacked together if those two areas have good end shake pretty much the whole clock should have good end shake although you can test them all and I, I can move each of these gears backwards or forwards somewhere greater than zero but less than a millimeter is the perfect amount similar to most of my other designs there's a parts kit available on etsy the link is at my mini factory or down in the description below this kit will include all of the arbors cut to length the bearings including the additional bearings that i consider optional but are they're highly recommended so i include them in the parts kit and everything that you need to put together a clock minus the weights inside the weight shell and the pendulum bob this clock is available at my mini factory along with the the smaller version links are down below if you want to download a new copy if you've already purchased it or purchase a new one thanks for watching i hope to release a video soon describing the new gear tooth profile and also propagating some of those gears to my other clocks that could use a little bit of a fine tuning. So stay tuned, uh, subscribe if you want to see information regarding those. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. More design updates should be coming soon.